Hi. Um, I had quite a few apologies for today, including Keith, but um, unfortunately I've been so busy I haven't written them all down, but there was quite a few. Um, I think you all got my email during the week saying that we are moving. Yes, good luck yep. to you. All the best. Yep. It's a good decision to make at uh, well, this time. Well, yeah. Well, G Gillian's arthritis is getting worse and worse, and she's getting terrible walking up the stairs. So, um, but that's going to put us a, a bit pushed before we move in. When we move in, we'll be okay because we've got we've got BT fi uh, uh, optic fiber, so we should get a good signal. Um, but until we move in, it's going to be a bit. Um, we're going to be a bit pushed this end, trying to get everything done because I've got to completely clear the house, and uh, um, I've got all my. I'm, I am a hoarder. Um, I, yeah, I am. Um, coins, um, all my craft stuff. Uh, I've got a mug collection. Uh, First day covers, oh, I, I, I collect everything, including Gillian, but I've got to take her with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so it is going to be a bit, so if, it, if, if the members think they want to replace me and Gillian till we move in, um, I'll leave it to the members, but directly we move, I'll, we'll be both be okay to get back to it. What would you okay. like to do, Ronnie? What would you and Gillian like to do? Well, to be honest, we've done it for so long, the, the people thing, we wouldn't mind carrying on. But I mean, That's if the members think it's best for somebody else to take over, we'll leave it to the members. Um, but uh, we're we're okay. I mean, we we've got it worked out quite well with the pins and everything, so it works out quite well. And of course, the I'd carry on doing the websites and anything, right? Um, Ron, please so, say something. Ron, yeah, go on, go on Bernard. Uh, um, you move and leave Gillian. I think she'd be a lot better off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> we, yeah. I, I've got a tent somewhere. She can have that on the village lawn. <laughs> oh dear. You might find you're in the tent, Ronnie. <laughs> yeah. Well, she gets used to me having a go at her. <laughs> no, it's all done in in fun. But um, well, let me just spot this. Yeah, I had an interesting one this morning. Um, a lady got in touch and asked me if I could find out about her father. I don't know if you've seen it on there yet, but his name was Elias Bell. And he was captured. Um, he was captured the, let me just find it. Yeah, he was captured the 19th of the 4th, 1942. And to me, that didn't ring any bells at all, the date. Uh, I thought at first Java, was he, you know, was he uh, uh, in one of the small islands on Java and captured there, but no, or, or he was um, trying to escape and captured. But then I found his, um, found his um, Japanese index card and he was uh, Royal Inniskillian Fusiliers. Well, of course, they weren't in Singapore, Malaya. They were fighting from India um, in Burma. So I looked further and found that he was captured, and I can't pronounce it, Yen Ang Yong, Yanning Yong. There were oil fields in the middle of Burma. And the Japanese were trying to take them, and that's where he was captured. And she thought he was on the Thailand Railway, but I can't. His, his Japanese liberation card, uh, his liberation questionnaire, uh, doesn't quote 
he anything except he was at, at Rangoon. So I think he was taken to Rangoon. He stayed in Rangoon jail the whole time. Um, but he was liberated May 1945. So he was one of the last captured and one of the last, uh, one of the first liberated, which is really strange. Never come across that before. Um, but that was interesting because I I found um, I found uh, on the Q papers a big piece about Rangoon prison or Rangoon jail when the Japanese left and they left a note. This is quite interesting. They left a note for the for the prisoners. They they disappeared and they left a note to the Hull captured prisoners of Rangoon jail, according to the Nippon military order, we hereby give you the liberty to admit to leave the, this place at your own free will. Regarding food and other materials kept in this compound, we give you permission to consume them as far as necessity is concerned. Oh, that's brilliant. We hope to have the opportunity to meet you again at battlefield somewhere, we shall continue our war, our effort eternally and in order to get the emancipation of all Asian races. I thought it was quite strange, you know. That, so really, the Japanese didn't kill them. They just left them anew and left the camp, which is uh, really strange. And this is before the bomb. So it doesn't before, always. This was before the bomb. Yeah, before. yeah, that was April forty-five. So this is before the bomb was set off. Um, no. So that doesn't. That kind of points to the Japanese weren't going to kill all the prisoners because they just left the prisoners there and 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 left them this note, and then. They didn't know if the gates were still locked. So one of the prisoners climbed over to see if the gates were locked. And they found a note pinned to the gate. Two gentlemen, bravely, you have come here open in prison. In prison. We have gone, keeping your prisoners safe, safely with Nippon, Nipponese night ship. After, afterwards, we might meet again at front somewhere. There, let us fight bravely each other. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, really <laughs> strange, really strange. And uh, this was all at Kew. So what happened was they, they, they had quite a few prisoners at, at Rangoon. And they, they marched the fit ones out to follow the Japanese to fall back. And they left the ill ones, 150 of them, at Rangoon Prison. Um, and this is, he was left there at Rangoon Prison. So he was, um, uh, he was freed a lot earlier than, than, than the rest of them, the rest of them after the surrender. So that's really were strange. They were, I, they expect, like, were they expecting them to come out and fight hand to hand? Do you think that's what it was? <laughs> Oh, God, that's brilliant. They're all they fifth, fifth Dan karate experts, and yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I like I, I like it. Nipponese night ship. Yeah, I, I thought that was brilliant. It's fascinating. <laughs> that is so. What a strange yeah, that story. Was, right? I, I hadn't come across that before. And then when the um, IINA, which I take it, is. Uh, oh, that's a national army. So, is it the Indonesian national army? That's the INA. What do you think, uh, Ray? Did you hear me, Ray? I can't. I can't get any sound, Ray. <laughs> Try, try again. No, I can't hear you, Ray.
No, your sound, I can't get your sound, Ray. Perhaps he got his, his, um, well, perhaps he's upside down wrong. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> his sound is upside down. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> you got to laugh or you'll cry. No, try, try going out and come back in, Ray. Oh, God. Oh, he is, he is tried it. Anyway, yeah, so I, that could be the Indonesian National Army or Indian National Army. But they went to the jail and helped support with weapons the jail. They, um, uh, so that to, if, the, if the Japanese went back, which they didn't do. Um, I thought that was quite interesting. I've never come across that before. I mean, you tend to look at, you tend to look at prisoners Get Ray's sound on. Can you hear us now, Ray? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you now. Oh, You're good. there. Good. Um, yeah. what, I was, what I was going to say, Ronnie, was um, it sounds like the Japanese were retreating as the as the British were coming back down from uh, Impal and Kohima. Yeah, that's right. They, 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 took, they took Rangoon, yeah. but probably they hadn't received the orders from Central Command to... Um, Get to carry out the execution of prisoners, so they just yeah. scarpered whilst they could, uh, yeah. you know, to get back down to the railway to go back to Thailand. Well, that, that said in the report that uh, the Japanese soldiers marched most of the prisoners out to, to follow them at, on retreating. And then the day after, um, civilians, Japanese civilians took over the jail and he said they were slovenly so they weren't very, they weren't army like they were, but they're the ones who took over the jail and they're the ones who left these notes. Which is really... Japanese civilians? Yeah, they, they or is it ex-civilians but they, they aren't the army, they aren't the fighting force. Um, Perhaps they were just, uh, I don't know, what could they be? Really strange. They, would they have been Ramusha? No, they weren't Ramusha. They, uh, ah, um, new guards were brought into the, the jail. These guards were slovenly ex-civilians and took over the guarding of the jail till the 29th of April. And that's when they disappeared. Really strange, really strange. But I, I haven't, that was something interesting to me because I hadn't come across Rangoon before uh, and I hadn't come across Rangoon Jail. So that was something new. Um, but I, I knew something was wrong when I saw uh, Royal Esquilians, Fusiliers. I, you know, that didn't ring a bell until I thought, well, yeah, that could have been Burma. And then it all started to make sense. Uh, but that was, that was quite interesting. Mm. But she thought she, he worked on the railway and according to his liberation questionnaire, he, he didn't. He, he stayed at Rangoon jail. And then when, the, the, when they were liberated, uh, the, the 150 of them that were at Ragoon Jail were, were sent to India hospitals. So they were taken to India. That's strange because, well, I suppose that, yeah, because they were taken, they were liberated April, and it wasn't till Japan surrendered that the Rangoon hospitals opened up for the ex prisoners. So they were taken out of Rangoon before all this um, because my dad like many others went to Rangoon hospitals um, the way back, after yeah. they were liberated anyway that, that was interesting I, I thought so uh, apart from that I, I've done I did all that this morning um, I thought I knew I had the meeting so I thought of course I'm still laying tiles 
uh, yeah, I'm still laying tiles. I mean, there's a problem. There's yeah, your well, problem. <laughs> I just, I just didn't like the tiles, Bernard. They didn't. They were porcelain, and they didn't cut very well. Um, oh. and, I got, and so I went and got a new cutter, uh, and I tried that, and they didn't cut. That didn't cut very well. So. I, I just didn't like the porcelain tiles I put up. I put three walls up, so I, I, I took them all off again. I got the hammer and chisel and took them. I, 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 I broke them all up, put them in the bin, and that was it. And then, now I'm starting to put new ones back on. I think you were the wrong person to do the job, Ron. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm too fussy, Bernard. I really am fussy. I, if I don't like something, I... I because at the time we were going to stay here, uh, and if if I, if they were like that, I uh, every time I looked at them I'd uh, cringe. So I thought no, I'll take them all off. So I, I took them all off and started again. When you That's advertise the house, Ron, when Sorry. you advertise, when you advertise the house, mind you, put that in the report. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's that's ever so strange because. Um, we're going to this residential park, which is like what we like, like I went up North Norfolk, because it's got woods and it's surrounded by woods and everything. And it's in an actual hall, and it used to be, during the Second World War, that was RAF Swannington. Um, that, that was started as an um, airstrip 1944, and finished 1947. So it was, they say that was the last airstrip to be made for the Second World War. Uh, so I got some research to do when I get there. That'd be nice walking around and trying to find everything. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, but we, that's a that's a that's an over 55s um, park. So no children. Um, so no yeah. Children, Sorry, Bernard. You don't have any children now. No. <laughs> no, we've got over children. <laughs> <laughs> that gets to that gets to a stage when we got North Norfolk, and we're on a park there where there's hardly any children at all, except you know you get some visiting the the elderly parents, and. Uh, We've got a thing. We uh, we think they're hobbits or something like that when they come in. <laughs> we, we we don't think look our miss children. <laughs> but no, oh, the time has gone with children. Let me tell you, you you've forgotten it's my birthday today. That, oh, that is I, your birthday, and oh, I'm, sorry, Bernard. I, I, I have. I'll send I you have, one later. I haven't heard from. Um, my my daughter, nor my grandchildren, nor my yeah, great grandchildren. Yeah, you didn't come up as as a birthday on Facebook. Did you yes. put your birthday? Oh, I, did, no, I didn't no. get you come up. I I don't put that on there. Oh no! Well, I usually go by Facebook, and that tells Happy me birthday, people's birthdays. Happy birthday, then, Bernard. Are. Happy yeah, birthday! Yeah. I hope I hope somebody comes along and takes you out for a nice meal or something then. Thank you, Barbara. Are you going out my, for a meal? My wife has gone out to buy me a diabetic cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, you Jen, enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy, yeah. happy Jimmy, birthday, Jimmy, Bernard. I, yeah, happy birthday, Bernard. I went, I went yeah, into hospital. Ron, Jimmy's I went into hospital a week oh, yesterday oh. to have this operation of taking the stent out uh, of my bile duct. Second attempt and it failed again and I got to go again. Oh, <laughs> and it's terrible. I was terribly ill when I came home. <laughs> nasty. That's very nasty. Oh, was that keyhole yeah. surgery for you? Was it? Oh, I've done the throat job. Oh mm. gosh, not nice. Enjoy your no. cake today then. <laughs> yeah, I, I oh, got Bernard, that was Julian's birthday. I, that was Julian's just... birthday last week and I I bought her. A cake, and and uh, then I remembered she can't eat cream because that brings her psoriasis out. Oh, 
Oh dear. So in the end, I, I finished up eating her birthday cake. <laughs> yeah. I wished her a happy birthday while I was eating it. <laughs> it's all right, Ron. I've had three cards. <laughs> oh. Well, can I, Bernard, can I just um, share with you that um, I'm expecting my first grandchild today. Oh, lovely. On my Fingers birthday. Crossed. Your birthday, yeah. <laughs> And it's also my friend's birthday um, as well. So the three of you um, will will share the same day. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm waiting for the phone to ring to tell me that uh, my daughter's had the baby. So if I if it does ring, uh, you know what it is. <laughs> you know what it is. You don't know what it is. No, no, they want a surprise, oh. which is good. Oh, so, good for them. Good for them. Know, it's it's ten thirty. Uh, say again, Bernard. Sorry. I said it'll be a boy, Ray. It will, yeah. Well, it'll be a boy <laughs> or a girl. <laughs> the first one, Ray. <laughs> the first one, Ray. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So very excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All the best that's, to her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's funny. That's funny though, Ray. When. When Gillian lost her father, like you lost your mother, you have the birth the same year. Mm. Because our, our first one was born, no, our, our boy was born when we lost, Gillian lost her dad. Yeah, well, it's, it's, strange. it's strange because um, my daughter's called Claire and um, her mum had um, a grandma who was 96 when she died in the... Uh, I think it was January. I know there was snow on the ground because we nearly lost the coffin on the, on the way up to the <laughs> church. Um, but um, she died in the January and Claire was born in the October of the same year. And now Claire's baby is being born in the same year as we lost my mum, as you say. Oh, yeah. yeah it's it is strange though, isn't it? But it's nice, yeah. you know. It just yeah, that uh, is nice. That is like handing nice. over the baton, isn't it? You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Right. Um, can I can I do a little did, thing for I, you? I was can going, I? I was going, yeah, I was going to say, how did the bells go? <laughs> right. Okay. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. Probably not. Um, oh. Yeah. I'll see if I can get it to play for you. I might need to take my microphones off, mightn't I? Oh, I've turned off the sound on it. It went really, really well. Really well. We were so pleased. We got that. Yeah. So, you might not hear it now, but there's the church. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, you see the church, yeah. Yeah. Right, I'll stop that now. Okay. It was and it amazing. Well. It went well. It started well. at um, 25 to 1. And finished at quarter past four without wow. without stopping, um, yeah, and we stayed there the whole time. Um, and when we get a chance, uh, there'll be a special record of it actually in the Bell Towers book. And then we're hoping to do a big full board um, to say that it was dedicated to to mark the centenary. Sorry, not the centenary, the anniversary of the signing of the surrender. Um, and you know, dedicate it and be put in that church. So we're so mm. pleased. Um, but a little strange thing has cropped up since then. On, on the following Tuesday, I organised a small service for us to go in, into the church, um, just by in the southern transept where we've already got a stone um, to dedicate uh, the FIPOs who didn't come back. And um, I'd found a book, uh, one of the Arthur Lane books, which you doubtless know, When You Go Home, um, that's what he's, he's called, and it's got the picture of the um, surrender that was signed, um, and I took that and I gave it uh, to uh, members of our, our group to have a look at, um, and then I lent it then to, to our, um, our new treasurer, uh, as she was interested. She was so interested in the book that she decided to buy a, her own copy. <laughs> And as she said, being a true Yorkshire lass, um, she bought a copy, a second-hand copy, um, that was only three pounds and twopence. We are delighted now that we've got this book coming into the group, because I know we're going to sort of all share it. 
It was given to a, a gentleman called H.W. Strathairn uh, from Creef, and he was a, a member of the Argyle and Southern Highlanders. He was in Singapore from 1942 until April the 16th, 1943, when he was sent on the railway with F Force. Yeah. And um, the book was given to him as an 80th birthday present. <laughs> And through the book, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. He's made various comments on, on what's in the book that relate yeah. to his own personal experiences. Yeah. So we're really quite excited. You know, to me, this is part of remembering these men, oh, yeah. that yeah. we will now see this man's personal thoughts throughout this book. Sadly, I think it means that he has passed away and it's been sold, sold on after his death. But we're hoping to find out more about this gentleman. And strangely, earlier in the week, there was a photograph of a reunion from some time in the 80s of the Argyle, Argyle Southerners, Southern, Southern, yeah, Southerners having a, a reunion. So I did put on, does anybody know if in this picture there is a, an H.W. Strathairn? And I'd like to be able perhaps to think that we could follow up this man and do a memorial to him too. You know, or remember him in some way. Mm. Um, it, it's just strange that one thing leads to another, like you were saying about um, Elias, you know, how, how that opened a new view to his release from Rangoon. Um, but you find out, I'm really looking forward to seeing these man's personal thoughts alongside what Arthur Lane wrote in that book, really. Mm. Um, mm, so, yeah. yeah, it was just really interesting. Arthur Very... was a funny, Arthur, Arthur. I got on well with him, but he was yeah. very, it was very, if he had a thought, he wouldn't budge. Yeah. He, he wouldn't budge on it. And he, you know, some of his thoughts, I, I mean, I, because he was Nessa, he, he started Nessa off. And uh, I did their website for him for a couple of years. But to be honest, he, everything I put on, he kept on altering. He'd tell me what to put on, I'd put it on, and next week he'd tell me to alter it again. And oh dear, it's forever going back and alter and stuff. So in the, in the end, um, he had a chat with him, with, I, I think it was, um, I can't remember his name now, but he died about 2001. And he actually did start off the role of honour, but he didn't start it off for the Feebles. He started off for all of them, but he didn't have a lot on it. So when he died, I took it on and I opened it up. So we got more and I, I redone the whole site and I added all he, the ones he had added into the new one. Um, so, and I, 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 I kept his name on it, uh, which I don't know I still got on there, but I did keep his name on it. Um, but but uh, he um, Arthur used to send me loads and loads of stuff uh, to put on the website. Uh, a lot of it was quite good, but some of it was, uh, you know, he was very dogmatic in the way he looked at things. You know, he looked at them rather strongly. And when I uh, I was asked. 2000 and, about 2005, if I had any names of people to go back to before the Changi prison was taken down. And so I sent them Arthur Lane's name and his email, and also Reg and, and his wife. And they, they both went. And about, I think I put it on Facebook, that um, he, I, I gave him a video camera to take with him, uh, Reg, and and Reg didn't get the camera very well, and that was, to be honest, the tape was lost, and I came across a tape on U, U, uh, YouTube about that visit. And so I could see Reg, because Reg was a good mate. I could see Reg there with his wife and, and Arthur and all them. 
that was actually quite good. That was quite good. They took them around the prison, and uh, one of the tie, I think she was a tie, she was put into the prison. Um, that was that was quite interesting. Mm. But, uh, that's, that's nice to see people, isn't it? When oh, you, it is, yeah. you, Reg died about 2009, I think, about 2009. Um, miss him, because we used to have good talks. He was Cambridge's. Uh, anyway, getting back to, yeah, the book, that, that's good. That's good. That's yeah. nice to have little comments as well. That's it. So I can't wait to, to read this gentleman's comments, really, if um, mm. um, I get a chance to, and um, see what he feels about his time over there. Um, so, yeah, he may not be, not be at our October meeting, because this the person who's bought this book may not be able to come, but in November, I'm sure it's going to be the centre of attention for us. Um, we're also thinking of um, putting his name um, in Wyndham if, he's not, if his name's not into the memorial, because, you know, unless we can find family for him, then we'll take on that role of getting him remembered, really. So, yeah. So that, that'd yeah. be nice. That's a project. Yeah. yeah. He said um, he returned from... Um, at the railway uh, back into Changi on the 16th of April 1943, so we might be able to find more out about him. Um, Margaret herself has um, got his um, questionnaire off the Kofipo site and found out a bit more about him. So it's just a strange coincidence, you yeah. know, coming up from so dot send, the peeler uh, bells and everything. If you send, send, email me his name and number if you've got his number and then yeah. i'll see what i can find out okay that's brilliant thank you ronnie you may i may have to it. wait until i see margaret yeah. again because yeah but i can add him holiday. to the role of honor for you yeah it'll be in our okay. role of honor as well yeah. but, um, it's yeah. sad to think that there might be quite a few things with these prisoners comments written in them that have been done in a similar way where they're given presents yeah. Um, they write their own thoughts. Yeah. I've had a couple of books like that, but I don't know who wrote them because there was no name in the book. But there was all yeah. in in the there was bits added here and there, um, yeah. particularly where the chap was, and they put a yeah. line round it and put I was here. But I've got quite a few of Arthur's books. Yes, I've got he, another couple of his smaller books because the the when you go home is quite. A pictorial book, isn't it, with all the photos of the yeah. different sites and things. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd forgotten I'd got these books. They were at the back of the wardrobe, yeah. <laughs> and I brought them out and then saw that the he'd got pictures of the surrender, of the document, you know, being signed, um, and took it along because it seemed relevant to what we were doing. As Bir Birmingham Association, we tend to focus more on the actual surrender. I don't know if yeah. you saw the medallions that we had done a couple of years ago to mark the um, 70th anniversary. Those were very good. I'm going to have to start now looking forward to the 75th anniversary, obviously, of yeah. the uh, end of the uh, war. Lots of things to oh. do. Oh. Just, oh. just a minute. Yeah, go on, Bernard. Ron, did you get any emails from me? No, recently. I think I sent you about three. Never had I any got, I got the one of the postcard, and I got the picture of your banjo. Yeah. And I added, no, um, I added those two to your dad's page. Uh, right. But really, the yeah. banjo. Um, the banjo I had to get in touch with Louise. No, the the watch. I had to get in touch with Louise because she took the picture and you have to ask the person if you can use it. And I did ask and she said, yes, I can use it. And um, she's going to she's going to put together for me a uh, an article on the Changi Cross. So I can add it into the Far Eastern Heroes, because that ought no, to be I... in there, because that was uh, your dad and her dad as well. Yeah. I, I wrote to you. I... Yeah. 
I, I came I across. To you. Oh, go on, Bernard. I wrote to you regarding my my father's eldest brother, who was in the First World War, right? And he was a captain. Uh, sorry, he was a major. Stogden. Um, and all I know of him is that he served in Egypt. And I asked you whether you were able to find anything out about him. Did he make it home? Yes, yes. Yeah, there's there's very little really you can find out. Um, well, he wasn't a prisoner. No, no. No. You see, I've I've um, recently I've managed to get hold of his daughter. And um, of course, she's she's young like me, and um, I haven't been able to get much information of her either. All I got from her is is that he was in the First World War. Uh, I don't know what regiment he was in, and um, he served in Egypt. So I don't I don't know what regiment was in Egypt. So his first name was what? George. George. Major George Stogden. I got a captain. No, that's the wrong date. See, my father was born in 1906, so he would have been born, I would think, in the in the 1800s, wouldn't he? Send me the details again, and I'll see what I can find. Okay, um, Bernard. Uh, I, I, I can't lot. remember seeing that. Um, I've got a lot of captains and stuff, but not not a major. Now send send me this. Send me the information. I'll see what I can find on him. That's all I've got. Is no, I haven't even got an army number for him. This. Well, I can't find him on forces. I've got the forces um, thing, and I can't find him on there. Um, I've, I've got so little information on him, you see. No, I'll I'll see what I can find. I'll see what I can find up. Um, yeah, this. Someone sent me this years ago, and and to be honest, I had so much going on. I I didn't. I found it the other day because I'm looking through all my stuff, thinking, what am I going to keep when we move? Can you see it? Yes. 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 Oh, what pictures you got? That's a full diary of. George Huntsman at Changi, and there were, uh, that's a full diary. Gosh. And he, he sent he sent me two copies, so I got another copy of it. And I hadn't I didn't do anything with it because I didn't know where that came from. Um, but uh, I'll have to have a good look through that. I'd, that. Uh, it's a pity because it's got loads and loads of information on Changi in it. There's, a, there's one or two pictures in, but nothing. Most of it is a diary. Yes, I see those. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll have to go through that and, and sort out. 
I don't, I don't, to be honest, I, I don't know why he sent it to me. And this was quite a, this was over 10 years ago. And I've never seen it come up as a book, so I don't know if he sent it to me to look through for him or what, because I never had new notes with it. But to, anyway, yeah. Um, Ray, what have you been up to, mate? Um, well, a couple of things, uh, really. Last week, we took um, a short trip um, to see a um, surviving ex-POW called Harold Pleasance, who is in a care home in uh, Shipston on Stour in the Cotswolds. And Harold was at Ubon. Um, I've met him quite a few times, but uh, we thought we'd just nip down and see him. He's 99 years old and um, he's really looking forward to his 100th, <laughs> um, obviously. Uh, he's in reasonable health, a bit um, a bit slow on his legs, but um, he, he's very comfortable, very happy, and they're looking after him extremely well. And all that, that was good. Then we went down to Gosport to visit uh, another ex-POW called Thomas Brown, who was also at Ubon. And uh, Tom is a youngster at um, just turned 97 and uh, he's still living in his uh, in his house with his daughter and, and he's very very well as well so we, we had a couple of good days with uh, with them um, exchanging information and talking about things it was it was really good and, and my wife's over at the moment from Thailand so uh, it was nice for, for her to meet them and also them to meet her as a, as a sort of contact from Ubon. Uh, and then, then we came back home via Salisbury and uh, Bath. And uh, uh, we were there just a couple of days before the, uh, the the other scare that happened last Sunday at Salisbury with um, oh, yeah. this shock uh, poison stuff. But um, Salisbury is a lovely place and I, I really do, if you've never been, I, I recommend it. It's, it's great. Cathedral's fantastic. Um, the other thing is, um, I'm in the advanced stages of planning a, a bit of a mega trip um, from Singapore, following the railway up through Kuala Lumpur to Bampong, over to Kanchanaburi, and um, as far as the railway, I'll take you up to Nam Tok, but then we're going to rent a car and go up a bit further, probably to Hellfire Pass. And then uh, back to Bangkok and the railway over to Ubon. And um, I'm doing this trip with um, David Sartin. His father, John, was um, in the SOE with um, Freddie Spencer Chapman in, in Malaya uh, behind enemy lines, uh, blowing up bridges and roads and accounting for various hundreds of Japanese lives. He got the uh, military cross in uh, recognition, but uh, his father John was captured um, by the Japanese in March uh, 42, um, completely by accident. He was riding his bicycle trying to go to another place um, in, in in Malaya to um, uh, to another camp so they could carry on the behind the lines operation. But there was quite a number of them, uh, about eight of them, captured in March and, and sent to uh, Pudu jail in Kuala Lumpur, um, which was a notorious place to be. Um, John Sartin decided not to escape um, because he, he, he didn't think the chances were very good, but um, others did and they were captured and executed. Um, graves unknown somewhere in Kuala Lumpur. Um, uh, but then um, John Sartin was sent up to the railway. Um, I don't think he actually worked on the railway, because um, I think it was more or less finished by the time he got there. But he ended up in Ubon um, as well. So, And um, we had lunch with David, um, with David and his wife the other day, and he told me that it was quite strange because uh, his father was a, an explosives expert, um, obviously a very hard soldier. But he ended up at Ubon sewing um, costumes together for the theatre group. <laughs> it's quite a contrast from an explosive expert to a seamstress. <laughs> so, uh, 
Yeah, so that, that trip's coming off in February. Um, we're, we're taking about three weeks over it, so looking forward to that. That's uh, that's my news. Yeah, um, just a minute. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, just a minute, just a minute. Just whilst we're in Singapore, Bernard, we'll we'll obviously go and see what we can find at Changi. Yes, you've seen my father. No, my my father's cross isn't there at the moment because oh. they need uh, refurbishing the chapel that they built. Right. I don't think but it's we... due to open for another year or so, is no, it either? No, no, it's, um, no. Closed long term. No, me and Louise, we had a letter saying that the, the cross had been re removed for safekeeping. Oh. Yeah. Well, well, we'll go and see what we can see. And uh, there's, there's lots of things. Uh, hello, can you still hear yeah, me? Yeah, just a minute. I'm just trying to get something on. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll obviously go and see what we can find out at, um, at Changi Bernard and uh, they all know me there. Um, yeah, just a minute. I'm messing around at the moment. I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The the other part of this trip is uh, Kuala Lumpur because um, uh, John Sartin was uh, had a camp at a place called Fraser Hill, which is about um, I'm not sure about 100 kilometres northeast of um, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, up in the hills, and, and we, we've got contacts in Kuala Lumpur where we'll try and retrace those steps, and obviously um, that, that would be quite quite a trip for um, for David, his son. If you go to um, um, Singapore, Ray, yeah, uh, there's there's quite a lot of interesting things on the island, which is just off. Um, Singapore. I can't think of the name of the island. Are you thinking of Sentosa? Sentosa, yes. Yeah. A lot of inf lot of information there. A lot, lot of the gun emplacements are still there. Are they? It's right. Yeah, it's right it's at the end. Good. Right at the end. You have to walk as far as you can on Sentosa. We came across it by chance when we yeah. were there. Can you see that, Ray? Yeah. Yeah. Can see that. Yeah. I put that on for Dave. Quite a while ago. Yeah. Uh, about the middle of your cross and everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Um, Guide Selby, 1989. Yeah, yeah. Well, he wasn't a very well man when he when he passed away. It was very sad. But that explains all about his middle of your cross and everything on there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that went on quite a while ago. Yeah. But, uh, oh, there, there was an island um, off um, Singapore. It wasn't Sentosa, um, but before the special operations executives got going in Singapore, um, there was something called the STS, a special training school, and that's what um, John Sartin joined. And he, he, he they, they took. Um, um, I think there were volunteers from the Singapore, um, what was it, Singapore Voluntary Corps or something like that, and he was trying to train them up in um, in explosives and and, and tactics um, from this particular island, and, and we've we've located it, um, but it's now a complex for um, container ships. <laughs> uh, so there's lots of places that have just disappeared in Singapore because it's um, it's grown such a lot over the last thirty years. Yeah, that that is is quite um because I've got his name Ronald John, but he he's quite um they 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 were left after to carry on, weren't they? So he carried on in Malaya after the surrender. 
Yeah, he, he, he left with, um, th there's a good book called The Jungle is Neutral by uh, Freddie Spencer Chapman, uh, which explains everything that goes on. And uh, um, okay. Spencer Chapman went um, up, drove up to um, um, Malaya um, round about the middle of December and set up um, camp, you know, and then obviously the Japanese came down and he was behind the enemy lines as they came down and he was with his party they were um sabotaging the, you know what they could find um and spencer chapman lasted the whole war through um dodging the the, the, the japanese and any uh, any groups that would sort of uh, dress up on him and um he avoided capture um, but unfortunately, he was the only one out of the whole group that. Um, it's eleven hours. That, that did survive capture. Yeah, but the 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 list is five to eight trains derailed, four large bridge damage, damaged, nine small railway girder bridges destroyed, six to seventy rail cuts, nine road craters, four hundred to five hundred telephone wires cut. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Five hundred to one thousand Japanese killed. Yeah. That's quite a list. No wonder he got the military cross. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh... Anyway, yeah. Um, anyway, that's eleven o'clock, and I'll have to call it now because I'm now going to go back to doing my tiles. Because uh, I've got I've got uh, three estate agents calling on Monday. <laughs> I've got to get you. Before we close, <laughs> before we close then, Ronnie, can, can I just say that uh, the poster uh, that was put on by Michael Freeman, I don't know if the other two gentlemen have seen this, um, about his grandfather. Um, it, it, that's fascinating that that came on yesterday afternoon. Um, it also tells uh, this film that was kept in the uh, yeah. organ pipes there. That's yeah. absolutely fascinating. If you go through and read the comments, there's a lot more history comes up about um, Bishop um, Leonard Wilson as well, which is of interest to me being, because he became Birmingham's uh, bishop after the war. Um, but that's really good what Michael Freeman's put on the, fam the FIPO family. And it raises the 10th um, the of the 10th um, incident as well, which might be worth yeah. bringing up for the next at one of the talks perhaps in october yeah. that is actually on because i added that a few years back into the feeble community yeah um and about leonard wilson who was birmingham's after the war yeah um if you go to feeble community and go to religion right and look down um, I find it. I found it the other day because I, I was looking up. If I, I did a search on Wilson, uh, or, and that came up one, one of my pages I'd written. And I read okay. through it and I thought that was in religion. Oh, I'll, I'll try and find that then. Um, yeah, and that, we're always that looking does, for things uh, of local interest. That does go into it quite a bit, and what he wrote about it. Yeah, we tried oh, to um, contact his sons yeah. to find out more information, but they never replied to us, sadly. But uh, not everybody, you know, wants to sort of keep on, you know, in oh. touch. Anyway, we better let you get back to your tiles, but uh, yeah, yeah, all the best I, I to you. I'm just trying to find this <laughs> thing I Where heard. do you live in, Barbara? What, sorry? Where do I live? Where do you live? I, yeah. I live I, I'm, I'm, I'm a Brummie, as you can probably tell. No Brummie. I, I, was, I, I was in Litchfield Barracks. Is, is that near Brum? It's, that's the other side of Birmingham to where we are. We, we, we live yeah. not far from where the old... Um, Austin factory is uh, was um, yeah so that's our side but we went to Litchfield the other day um, which no, is uh, a magnificent cathedral so 
Yeah, there's a lot of history up there, and uh, COFIPO obviously held the VJ70 service there for this area. And well, I, I did think my Will national trip again. There. Oh, when right. Was, so when we came back from Berlin, we went to Litchfield Barracks, and right. I, I I served the end of my time there. Fascinating. And very, yeah. It was very primitive. <laughs> it's quite <laughs> posh around it? Litchfield. It's quite nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To what we've been used to in Berlin, it, it was very because we were in Rommel's barracks in Berlin. Really, um, we, wow. we had double glazing and everything in there. And when we came back to Litchfield, we had forty to a room where we would only be in four to a room in Berlin, and there was a pot belly stove in the middle of the floor. Oh my goodness! And I, and I made a mistake of picking a bed right by the pot belly stove. Oh, <laughs> oh. all. The, all the your, men used to your job to stoke it. <laughs> yes, and and we had to get a lorry and bring the coke there. <laughs> oh my goodness! We had oh, I bet they're good memories. Good memories. <laughs> Barbara, if you ever yes. look in Far Eastern Heroes, yeah, and look down for keeping the faith. Keeping the faith. Okay. That's where it is. Okay, and there's, that, there's that's a big super. bit about him. There's a big oh. bit about him I, I put on a few years back now. Um, the double tenth is in there. Uh, and arrive in Singapore, prisoner of war, the double tenth. These are the headings. A yeah. broadcast sermon by him, which I copied wow. out and put on there. And my father's witness. Um, that, that's that, brilliant. That's, that's good. That's quite a long thing. Uh, yeah. I put it together. A few, well, that's quite a few years back now, but it may have been about 15 years back. That's, but that's, 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 that's worth really reading. Good. That's yeah. worth reading because there's a lot on there. But it's in Far Eastern Hills, not religion. It's no. in Far okay. Eastern Hills. Lovely. Uh, Thank you for that. Yeah, and his plaque, John Leonard Wilson, Bishop of Singapore, 1941 to 1948, and Birmingham mm -hmm. from 1958 to 69. Um, Shipped, oh, I can't remember, I can't see the first bit. Shipped and found his piece, 1969 to 1970. Well, thank you for that information. That's, so that, really that is quite long, so that's, that'd be a nice read, I suppose. That's uh, yeah. keeping the faith. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, well, well thanks, thanks everyone. I'll stop the record now. Um, I, oh.